In example 2.3, we're going to take a look at some of the properties of the system that we were analyzing in example 2.2. So in that last example, we found that the constant Cn is equal to this expression over here. And this applies for the cases when n is an odd number. So when n is even, the Cn is equal to 0. So the first thing we're going to observe is that uh, the absolute value of C1 squared is actually a rather large term. So if you substitute in 1 inside for n, you see that this is equal to 8 times the square root of 15 divided by pi to the power of 3 squared. And this is actually equal to 0 0.998555. So you can see this is a rather dominating term because all the Cn's, they should add up to 1. And then if C1 is already so near 1 already, that means all the other terms, C2, C3, and C4, they are much smaller than C1. So C1 is a dominating term. And then there's a good, very good reason for this because if you take a look at the initial wave function, so this is a graph for the initial wave function. Recall that in the last example, this graph actually looks something like this. So this single bump over here, this actually resembles very much the first stationary state, the shape of the first stationary state. So the first stationary state is not exactly the initial wave function, but it looks pretty much the same. So in when you construct the linear combination of the stationary states to fit this initial condition, you can expect that C1 is going to be a very large term because C, uh, Xi1 resembles the stationary, yeah, the initial wave function so much. And that is a reason why this is the case, why Cn, C1 is such a large number and why it dominates the other terms because the initial wave function, the shape of it mostly resembles Xi1. So this is one observation we can make. So the second observation we can make is that we can verify that this identity here is indeed true. So the sum of all the cn squares, it is indeed equal to 1. So in this case, we only need to consider the case where n is an odd number, because for even, cn is just equal to 0. So all we have to do is now to substitute this expression in. So n to the power of 3 pi to the power of 3. So square. So all you have to do now is just to drag all the constants out. So you have 8 times the square root of 15 pi to the power of 3 square. And then you have this summation over here. So 1 divided by n to the power of 6 for n equal to all the odd numbers. So this infinite series is essentially equal to 1 plus 1 over 3 to the power of 6 plus 1 over 5 to the power of 6 and so on. And uh, there is actually no fast way I can show you how to derive the value of this. And so you're going to have to look up a table. So that I've actually seen uh, methods where you can use Fourier transform to, to deduce what this answer is. So you can analyze a certain function and by doing some manipulations you can deduce what this infinite series is. But I'm not going to do that here. Just you, You'll just have to look up a table for the values. And then it turns out this is actually equal to pi to the power of 6 divided by 960. So here you have all these constants over here squared. So let's just square this first. So 8 squared is equal to 64. F uh, square root of 15 squared is just 15. So 64 times 15, that's actually equal to 960 divided by pi to the power of 6. So multiply by this infinite series is pi to the power of 6 divided by 960. And of course, these cancel out. So this is going to be equal to 1, which verifies this relationship over here. So the third thing we're going to look at is the expected value of total energy, the expected value of the Hamiltonian. And then recall in the earlier derivations we found that this formula is indeed true. So we can use this infinite series here to find the expected value of the Hamiltonian. So let's just see what the expected value of the Hamiltonian is for the system in example 2.2. So once again, we, can, we only need to consider the odd terms because Cn is equal to n is equal to 0 if n is even. So here we substitute in the expression for the nth energy state. So as we found in our earlier derivations, this is equal to all these constants over here. So now we can do a bit of simplification. So uh, square this, we've just done that, it's equal to 960. So divide this by 2, that's just equal to 480. So let's just gradually try to bring all the constants out. And then we have pi to the power of 6, we also have pi squared over here, so that just becomes pi to the power of 4. 
And then of course we also have our h bar squared from here. And then in the end, inside the summation symbol also, also don't forget the m8 squared. So inside the infinite series, we all we are left with n to the power of four, one over n to the power of four. So they usually cancel out. So uh, once again, this is actually pretty similar to what we had over here. Only this time it's raised to the power of four. And once again, uh, the best thing I can do is to give you the answer for this infinite series. You're going to have to look up a table for the value of this pi to the power of 4 divided by 96. So we can just substitute this right back into this expression. So pi to the power of 4, you can cancel this out. And then six, uh, 480 divided by 96, that's just equal to 5. So you get 5 times the h bar squared divided by mh squared. So this is your answer. This is the expected value of total energy. And you see that this expression here is actually really similar to, similar to E1. So if you substitute in 1 over here, you see that this is just equal to pi squared h bar squared divided by 2 ma squared. So if you just take pi squared and divide it by 2, you see that it's actually very close to 5. So the first energy state, the value is actually really close to the expected value, which is perfectly valid because we found that the probability of getting the first energy state is very large, so expect you can uh, you can expect that the expected value is going to be very close to the first energy state.